Coffee. Coffee now! <laughs> There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission. One message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, the news program that reports the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us God. I'm Rick Wiles. Welcome to this one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. Canadian businessman Jim Garrell will join me in 10 minutes. He will tell us why he's convinced that Barack Obama is a foreign intelligence operative. And speaking of intelligence operatives, we'll start today's headlines with the latest news about the NSA. The NSA's vast worldwide surveillance operations are making headlines around the world today. German magazine Der Spiegel reported that the NSA spied on the internal communications of France's foreign ministry and diplomats. Der Spiegel said a top-secret document provided by Edward Snowden reveals that French diplomatic offices in New York and Washington had electronic bugs installed on the premises and that screenshots were taken from computer monitors in United Nations offices. The German magazine said the U.S. sought intelligence on France's policy objectives, weapons trade, and economic stability. French newspaper Le Monde reported that the NSA spied on over 70 million telephone calls in France in 30 days. French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabus has summoned the U.S. ambassador over the latest revelation that the U.S. is spying on tens of millions of French telephone calls per month. France, however, has been accused of running its own snooping operation on the French people. Le Monde said the French government stores vast amounts of personal data of its citizens on a supercomputer at the headquarters of the French intelligence service. The paper said the data includes emails, text messages, telephone records, and Internet browsing records. Meanwhile, the NSA's tailored access operations has been spying on Mexico's president for years. According to Der Spiegel, the NSA tapped into a trove of confidential information when the spy agency hacked into the central server in the computer network of the Mexican presidency. Four moderate earthquakes rattled Israel in four days. Officials from the Israeli Home Front Command and various emergency services held a meeting Sunday night to prepare for the possibility of a catastrophic earthquake in Israel. Tel Aviv University geologist uh, Shmule Marco said he is concerned about a large earthquake that could happen soon. Hebrew University geology professor Amats Agnon said that Numerous Israeli cities and towns, including Tiberias, are built on the Syrian-African fault line. He warned that a major earthquake could kill thousands of Israelis. An Israeli Knesset committee approved a bill on Sunday that would severely restrict the ability of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu or a future prime minister to agree to the division of Jerusalem in ongoing negotiations with the Palestinians. The law stipulates that no government official may conduct negotiations to divide Jerusalem or give away any part of the city without a supermajority of at least two-thirds of the members of the Israeli Knesset. Last week, the New Republic magazine in the United States speculated that Mr. Netanyahu is preparing to divide Jerusalem. President Obama is on record stating that he 
once a Palestinian state agreement by late spring 2014. New Jersey is the 14th U.S. state to permit homosexual couples to marry. Last month, a New Jersey state judge ruled that the state must permit same-sex marriages. Newly elected U.S. Senator Cory Booker, the current mayor of Newark, New Jersey, conducted the first gay wedding Sunday night. When he asked if anybody in the audience objected to the same-sex marriage, one man said that the gay marriage was unlawful in the eyes of God and his son, Jesus Christ. He was removed from the room amid thunderous applause by the audience. Mayor Booker responded by saying he heard no objections worthy to consider. Therefore, he pronounced the homosexuals as a married couple. So I think we should take note that Mr. Booker, who will soon join the United States Senate within days, declared that God's moral code in the name of Jesus Christ, are not worthy to be considered. Frustrated family members of SEAL Team 6, members who were killed in a helicopter crash, think the facts of that wreck and the death of those men are being covered up by the U.S. government. The mission was called Extortion 17. That's an interesting name. The chopper went down on August 6, 2011, in Afghanistan. Thirty American soldiers, including members of the famed SEAL Team 6, were killed after a rocket-propelled grenade struck the slow-moving Chinook helicopter. SEAL Team 6 members were responsible for the Pakistan raid that killed Osama bin Laden. Mr. Charlie Strange, father of one of the soldiers killed that day, suspects that his son was set up by somebody. He told the Washington Times that confidential information about the mission was leaked to the Taliban and that Taliban warriors were in position waiting on the helicopter. Other parents of the killed servicemen are also demanding answers to many strange facts about that mission. Attorney Larry Clayman from Freedom Watch has filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court against the Pentagon. He wants the Pentagon to release an array of classified documents. Mr. Clayman said the Pentagon is stonewalling the parents, seeking answers to questions about the death of their sons. Mr. O went before TV cameras today to defend Obamacare and to explain the numerous technical glitches on the healthcare.gov website. Mr. Obama said there is no excuse. For the problems, and he promised to fix the website that cost the taxpayers $634 million to develop. And of course, it doesn't work. Well, let's take a break. When I return, Canadian businessman Jim Garrow will join me, and he's going to tell us why he is convinced that Barack Obama is a foreign agent. He's also going to talk about the deaths of of journalists. Andrew Breitbart, and author Tom Clancy. He says this is all connected. We're going to find out why when I return on the next segment of True News. Don't go away. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're listening to True News, the end time newscast. This is Max McLean. Listen to the Bible from Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. 
from Psalm 118. Listen to the Bible. It's great for the soul. This is True News, your alternative source for global news, analysis, and commentary. I'm Rick Wiles. Dr. Jim Garrow is a Canadian businessman in the field of private education. He is the founder of the Bethune Institute, which operates a chain of pink pagoda schools in China. Mr. Garrow is also the founder of the Pink Pagoda Girls, a humanitarian organization that rescues Chinese female infants from death by families who want a son under China's one-child policy. In recent days, Dr. Garrow has made some shocking and controversial claims. Among those claims is the statement that intelligence agencies around the world know that Barack Obama is a foreign plant who was placed in the White House by the uh, Saudi Arabian royal family. And so he's on the phone right now to discuss these uh, statements. Uh, Dr. Garrow, welcome back. Well, good to be back. Nice to see that you're uh, right on top of all of the uh, strategic messaging, which is, you know, shaking things up. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, you know, when I saw this um, um, online that uh, that you had said that uh, Barack Obama was a, a foreign plant, that didn't sound bizarre to me because I've always maintained that he is a foreign plant. Uh, common sense tells you this man uh, is not who he says he is. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to figure this out. And and I came to the conclusion that that uh, the reason he bowed to the king of Saudi Arabia was he was acknowledging his master. And and I, I, I think they put him into office, and I suspect they may be uh, disappointed that they haven't gotten their money's worth. Uh, so anyhow, I want to I want to hear your thoughts of, of how you came to this conclusion or what information you have and and what you think the the objectives are and and uh, the mission so first of all what what made you arrive at the at the uh, position of believing or knowing that Barack Obama is a foreign agent well let let's start with your statement uh, just a moment ago where you you indicated that he had bowed to the royal uh, family uh, had bowed to the king of Saudi Arabia or the House of Saud, as they call it there. Um, he did, but you know that was not an indicator of a president bowing in abeyance to his master. In fact, what it was, as any good Muslim knows, a Muslim will tell you that it would be their responsibility to bow to that royal leader, not by virtue of the fact that he is a king, just because he's a king. It's because within the Muslim, the Islamic faith, he has been given a high position, and that high position is as the protector of the holy cities of Medina and Mecca. And that is what the acknowledgement was that that uh, Obama did. I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you that it, th- there is so a high, really, there's a deeper and fact, higher meaning in that bow. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And that's the one that every Muslim around the world understands. Uh, they don't look at it. You know, Americans may look at it and say, "Well, no American president's going to bow to anybody." You know, and that's what they might say. But in fact. It wasn't an American president. It was a subservient Muslim doing what any good Muslim would do in acknowledging the protectorate status that this gentleman had. Not just being a king, but the fact that he was the protector of the holy cities of Islam. It would be comparable to uh, the way any Roman Catholic would would greet the Pope if he or she came into the physical presence of the Pope. It would be a sign of respect. You are our spiritual mentor. You're our spiritual leader. You're the highest spiritual uh, uh, leader in our faith. And so that's what Barack Obama was doing. Yes, it was recognizing the office of protector, which in Islam is the highest. uh, Nothing uh, in responsibility meets uh, that. Uh, given, you know, uh, being the one who's actually protecting those holy sites. I mean, uh, what higher uh, calling is there in in their faith? There just isn't one. All right. So, what? What again? Let's. Uh, what led you to believe or to conclude that Mr. Obama uh, is a foreign plant and that he answers to Saudi Arabia? Well, we've had a. 
I've had a number of conversations with military intelligence people, and having been involved in, in intelligence myself over the last 45 years um, in service to, to America. I want to be clear on that, you know, because people wonder. You what, know, what, do you mean, what do you mean by that, Jim? Well, I was, I was involved for 45 years, and until uh, October the 2nd at midnight, uh, was employed uh, by the government of the United States. Um, and my background, uh, I, was, I was tasked with doing a number of things. Uh, uh, at the age of 18, I was recruited and uh, came into the fold, as it were, and uh, went through training um, and, uh, you know, served a number of different uh, positions, places uh, around the world. China, of course, uh, specifically, Colombia, South America, and, and one, uh, one instance, uh, I've actually had dinner at the, uh, the head of the Spanish-speaking banking world. Uh, I've had dinner at his home uh, in uh, Barcelona, Spain. Um, you know, and again, another assignment that had to do with bringing the banking system into line. I've, I've delivered a message from Ronald Reagan uh, to the Iranian ambassador of Canada because, of course, they'd already thrown them out of America. Um, and did, so did, any mess- Jim, did you work for the CIA? I can't say the agency. I, I signed the Official Secrets Act, which means I cannot divulge certain things. But the things I'm telling you today will be within, uh, you know, my flexibility um, uh, that I can explain. And, and this ended on October 2nd? October 2nd, actually. Just because it, of the uh, the government shutdown? Did you have to? I'm, I'm just joking. But what? Uh, okay. why did it end on October 2nd? Uh, because on October 30th, um, or sorry, September 30th of this year, uh, Obama finally put it together that since I outed him, uh, and what he had done uh, back in January, that was January 21st. I talked about uh, the very first time I posted on the 20th, and on the 21st, radio people started, and television people started calling me because they read this, and it was so over the top. Um, they decided, man, well, you t- explain this. What do you mean a litmus test of the military? What's this all about? So I explained in detail to, to over uh, 600 radio and television shows uh, exactly what it was and what Mr. Obama was, in fact, doing to, to high-level military people. Now, since then, it's been proven. It's been shown quite clearly that he's moving them out. Now, they're mum. I don't know if you noticed, but that, that mum is the word. Nobody is saying anything about the reasons behind it. And the two, the two most recent high-ranking generals were just removed uh, about a week ago, and those were the two commanders over our nuclear uh, arsenal. Yes, and one admiral as well. Yes, number two. one general and one admiral, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and another general who, who... So those two were the number one uh, individuals in their uh, uh, forcing, um, their assignment in terms of uh, force, and uh, the other one was the second uh, in command for the uh, the military uh, on land. Why why so, is Obama purging the military? Because he has other uses uh, for the military. That uh, first of all, uh, he's expecting that uh, they will not obey the Constitution as written. Um, remember, for him, it's a flawed document um, and archaic. Uh, all right for a time, but of course, we're in a different time where he will now interpret all meaning. Um, so that's his wishes are not that the Constitution will be abided by, not that the rule of law as we've known it historically in America, uh, but that it will be something interpreted by him and his minions, uh, which means the socialist horde that, uh, uh, that uh, proves sycophantic around him. So we, we're in a different era now where, where it's a whole different kettle of fish. But what I had tried to do back in January uh, by alerting the world to what was going on, or America to what was going on, it took till September 30th for Obama himself to figure out that I was, in fact, employed by the federal government of the United States all that time. He's right on top of it, eh? Um, Jim, we're, um, when you say employed, um, um at the same time, you've, you've operated uh, businesses. Uh, so are you saying that these businesses have been your cover for your covert operations? Yes, but I, but I fully 
you know, was involved in opening schools and saving babies and uh, doing all these other things. Did, were you aware that I opened a, a duplicate backbone uh, of the Internet, coast to coast in Canada, to feed into the United States in case things went down in the U.S. for some reason? No. You just flick the switch and go into Canada and have it feed from Canada? No, not aware of it. Well, it's coming out in a book, in a, or not a book, in a, a big article, I believe. Eric Rush, you know, the black journalist who's mm-hmm. on Hannah all the mm-hmm. time? Yeah, he's writing it. He's hung out with me for two years, uh, and he knows more detail than anyone. And here's a guy who'll, sta- who'll stand there, look you right in the eye, and say, you know what, Gerald's telling the truth. Uh, Jim, um, for people who are saying, okay, something here doesn't sound right, uh, the guy was serving in U.S. intelligence for 45 years, and suddenly he comes out and he admits it and he talks about it, they, w- they would never allow that to happen. What's your response to that statement? I live in Canada. What you, are they going to do? Arrest me? No. Um, worse than arrest. Mm-hmm. I'm alive. I'm well protected. In fact, you want to talk about protection, ask Mark Luttrell. Uh, he phoned me, what, two weeks ago just to see, Jimmy, you okay? I'm a little worried. Mark Luttrell's the guy that CNN and MSNBC and Fox all have him when they talk about intelligence uh, issues, security mm-hmm. issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep, who I am. Um, you know, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, years ago, uh, was it Chuck Barrett? No, the, Barris. Barris. Chuck, Chuck Barris. Barris. Chuck Barris. Gong Show. Yes, I yes. had this conversation. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the host of the Gong Show. And, and, and years later, he came out and he said, look, I, I've, been, I've been a CIA hitman. Uh, and the Gong Show was my cover. And, of course, a lot of people just rolled their eyes and said, that, that's, uh, that's crazier than the Gong Show. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I think the guy was telling the truth. But I, I have no idea whether he was or he wasn't. Um, all I know is that with, within uh, the course of events uh, where uh, one thing led to another in my career, uh, I was presented with things that would probably not be normally presented to people in terms of opportunity. Um, but we took advantage of it, uh, made a huge difference. You, you won't even know, uh, to some degree, what difference we made in securing the security of the United States and the citizens of the United States as a result of good intelligence, good operatives working um, to the end of securing the safety and security of the nation. So all of those details, well, you don't necessarily need to flog them out in public unless you're writing a book or doing a movie or something. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, let's go back. Let's go back to the Barack Obama Saudi Arabia connection again. Yes. Is your your statement that Obama is a Saudi agent is is this based on your just your gut feeling instincts or or is it based on fact uh, fact fact Yeah, can't go into the details of all of it. I can't, but I want you to just I'm going to ask you some interesting questions. Mm-hmm. And you you know ponder them for a moment. Okay. Barack Obama, at a time when travel to Pakistan was not allowed on an American passport, made the transition from America to Pakistan successfully, along with a Pakistani friend, a gay uh, lover kind of a dude, uh, from school. The two of them went for a vacation together, supposedly. Uh, What passport was he using? If he couldn't use an American passport, what passport did he use? It's a question I've asked many times on this program. Okay, and it's Indonesian is the answer. Mm-hmm. Why would he have an Indonesian passport? And you know full well he went to school in Jakarta, or close to, the environs of right. Indonesia. And he was listed as Indonesian and as Muslim. That's right. Okay, we know those things. But isn't that hugely strange that this American would actually be able to do that? It was. It's very strange. And what's even stranger is that the mainstream news media and the political leadership in Washington pretends that it's not strange. Mm-hmm. Of course. Well, they have an ideology that they want to back up. 
he represents the probably the epitome, the apogee, the perigee, sorry, of what they would would want uh, in having a leader who ran things just the way they wanted to have the government run. Um, they're seeing uh, sociological, uh, psychological, uh, messed up person who, I'm, I'm just saying that for fun, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, the man buys into the whole notion of Marxism as, as a superior notion, as an ideology that works. Um, that's where this whole mantra of, of equality and fairness and uh, equity for everyone it comes from, and yet it's a false notion. It's never worked. Right. No country's ever had it successfully worked. So here we have America, the only, uh, we're not the only democracy in the world, but here we have a constitutional republic that has worked up until this point in time, although the foothold of communism in schools all across the nation is, is deep, deeply entrenched. There, there was a hiccup there when they had uh, Joe McCarthy, of course, going and finding communists, um, and of course, he's been belittled in history, when in fact he was probably one of the most astute of patriots at the time. Absolutely. What we need today are astute patriots who will look at fact, will look at things and ask the right questions. Uh, the fourth estate, uh, the media, um, those who should be holding the feet to the fire and looking for truthfulness and not allowing any of these weaselly politicians to get out of telling the truth. Um, They're not doing their job. In fact, they've been complicit in the undermining of America as a society. And, I mean, they've done great damage when, in fact, the whole notion of the safety and security of the republic itself was grounded in the fact that there would be freedom for these people to operate. I I think the complicity of of the media is criminal. Yes. I totally agree. But let me jump right back into that. I'm, I'm not trying to... No, no, I want, no, go ahead. I want, go ahead. ...regard Obama, but, um, you know, people are not asking the right questions about Obama. How is it that he went to Columbia, that he was on a foreign scholarship? He was on a, a Fulbright foreign student scholarship. How could he do that if he was an American? And why are his uh, college records sealed? Why are they all sealed? I mean, he has something to hide. That's why. Um, it would be a huge embarrassment. If, did- if he is a foreign agent, then obviously U.S. intelligence agencies are aware of it. So okay, the, question, me- the question is, are U.S. intelligence agencies participating in this crime? And if not, why are they silent? I'm not silent. No, I'm talking about the agencies officially. Well, wait a minute. Um, there was a point in time where I officially let the word out. Mm-hmm. Well, remember, January 21st this year, what did I do? I stood firm out in public saying that this man had an agenda, was asking an inappropriate, unconstitutional question of his leadership in the military. Would you fire on, on uh, American citizens if they wouldn't give up their, their arms in confiscation? in spite of the Second Amendment that says they have the right to have and hold arms. He was breaking the Constitution right then. I sent that signal all across America. And I got poo-pooed all over the place. I got threatened all over the place. But you notice I'm still alive. Okay, but my, my question, Jim, is why haven't the... why haven't the intelligence agencies moved on this in an official capacity to go to the American people and say the man in the White House is an imposter. I would advise you to look at the the very thing that's happened with the military. The same thing has happened in every single agency that Mr. Obama has rule over, which is all of them in the end, although I have to admit uh, it's not a pyramidic structure with the president at the top. There are many sidebar agencies that operate outside of the purview of the president. Now, if you're, I didn't know if you're aware of that, but there are. Mm-hmm. There's a number of them. And they take care of things that uh, have to do with the safety and security of the citizenry around the world. 
as well as the uh, uh, technological advancement that's been made, the uh, trade practices, uh, the uh, copyrights, uh, the patent protection, those are all looked at and cared for by American agencies. Right. Some, it's, it's a hit, it's a hit quick kind of a thing where they have to deal with people in foreign lands. But once again, I'm, I'm asking, why are they permitting an imposter to sit into the White House and do the damage to this republic that this man has done? Okay, I'm going to just say to you this. How many in the Senate and how many in the House have been threatened and had their family threatened? How many do you think there were? Well, I would assume quite a few because I, I will tell you um, a personal friend who was speaking one-on-one at a dinner with a member of the Congress this is last year, asked that uh, senior congressional member, why isn't anybody in the Congress standing up to Barack Obama? And the uh, member of Congress said, because they are afraid. And my friend said, afraid of what? And the, the member of Congress said, we all have families. Amen. There it is. And he, he, he was absolutely shocked that this member of Congress said that statement to him face-to-face in a dinner. Yeah. And ask, ask yourself this. What's the famous quote uh, with, with regard to Valerie Jarrett? What did she say? Do you remember what she said no. about now we're in charge? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and, and they're gonna, there's going to be hell to pay? Uh, Valerie Jarrett was born in Iran. Um, is she also uh, uh, is she also working for foreign powers? I don't know that for sure. Mm-hmm. That I don't. I can't make a statement one way or the other on that. Is she really the one who's in control of the White House? She runs the United States of America. She runs and the United States of America. Yes, she's never been vetted. She's never gone through the process that you or I might go through in order to get a badge, in order to get a security clearance, in order to be anywhere near the White House. She's never been through it. Mm -hmm. Good reason for it, too. She wouldn't pass. Well, neither would Obama. Exactly right. Right. So does, does, uh, does she work for Obama or does Obama work for her? Now, that is a very interesting question. Very interesting Mm -hmm. question. What do you think? Um, yeah. Valerie Jarrett is the power behind the throne. Okay, but who does she work for? That's a very good question. You don't have any clue? I have no ability to say anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jim, tell me what you think has... What is coming down in this country? What has happened? To me, there is no doubt in my mind there has been a coup d'etat. The the government has been overthrown. The Constitutional Republic has been overthrown. We are now in a post-constitutional era. And and it's only lip service that they're giving to the Constitution. We're now in a dictatorship. Yes, we are. Uh, So what do you think? What happened? Put it into words what you think has come down and what's in place and where are they taking it? Well, Obama, from the very beginning... His mission has been to strip away the defenses of America. And how is America defended? Well, first of all, it's defended by a population that believes in something. It believes that the Constitution and the rule of law is sacrosanct, or has in the past. Now they're totally unsettled because they're not sure about their own foundations any longer. The things that they could count on can no longer be counted on. Law enforcement can no longer be counted on. Um, The relationship, let me, in fact, that's a very important thing to go into right away. The very fact that neighborhood policing, remember community policing has been such a big thing for so many years. The little cop, the cop on the beat, getting to know his area, getting to know his neighbors, his church mates, the people who are part of the Rotary Club, all of these things. Personal relationship. Obama is stripping that away and has been very careful in how he's dealt with those who hold a badge. 
what does he do? He bribes them out of this neighborhood notion. He bribes them out by uh, doing away with the connectedness with neighborhood. How does he do that? He buys big armored vehicles. Then, of course, they have to go and be trained. Then, because they're away with other people from other areas and jurisdictions being trained, they're convinced that, you know what, we need to work together because we are the police service. If we need you from your area, we will be calling on you to come to another area. So what does what happens? The direct eyeball-to-eyeball relationships that are built by neighborhood police are stripped away and replaced by the notion that you could be put into another area to serve as a policeman. And so when Joseph was forgotten, do you remember in the Bible that talked about when Joseph, the protections that the uh, people of Israel had, until Joseph was no more, and he was remembered no more as king, and then the Israelites became slaves because nobody remembered the relationship, the special relationship between Joseph and the Jews. So now what do we have? We have a stripping away of relationship with community and neighborhood. And so he he has federalized and he's militarized the local police departments. Simply put, yes. But I wanted to get into the whole notion of this thing of neighborhood and how for, for decades we worked so hard to see that policing was something that was uh, an extension of your own house, of your own family. The man on the beat was just part of your neighborhood. He was a good guy who had a job to do, and you could trust him. Now we'll have people from, are you ready for this, foreign lands who will be used. They're already here. Of course, and and, and this is... This has been underway for for quite some time, um, and I, you know, I and I've pointed out in the past. This has been over. I'm, I'm guessing twelve years ago. There, there was there were reports in European newspapers and TV channels uh, uh, at least ten, twelve years ago. Somebody somebody videotaped. Um, I guess uh, it was a. Uh, if I recall, it was a German. Uh, it was German soldiers being trained for police duties in in um, the Bronx, New York City, mm-hmm. and uh, the the commander was uh, you know uh, was yelling at the troops, you know, and I and I can't repeat the words; but they were profane. But he was telling them to hold their machine guns and to pretend that he was shooting blankety blank uh, black people in New York City. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, because I remember on this program saying, why are German troops being trained to kill mm-hmm. American black people? Yeah. And, and you also have to ask, why are Russians here and why are Chinese right. here? And right. why are there special economic zones being set up on federal land? Why is that happening? That's a Chinese thing. That's right. And yet we have it now. China China has a major uh, economic zone uh, going up in Idaho. That's right. And there's a copper mine uh, that's totally Chinese um, and a little town and intersections of major highways um, in that area of the country that are almost off limits. Mm -hmm. Going back to, to Obama... Uh, weakening the protection, the defense of this country, he has already ordered the Joint Chiefs of Staff to reduce our nuclear arsenal to 1,000. If he gets his way, he wants to take it down to 300. In the meantime, the Russians are, they announced last week that they will increase nuclear armament by uh, spending by 50% next year. So, so Mr. Obama is is uh, stripping away our nuclear defense, while Russia is enlarging its nuclear arsenal. Mm-hmm. Again, what American president who loves this country would take action such as this? And my answer well, is, there is no American uh, leader who would take these kind of actions. A foreign person would do it. 
If, if you remember, the Founding Fathers set it up such that a person who had divided loyalties, who did not see things as an American, could not sit in the place of a the presidency. They would not sit there. That's right. Because they feared that the reason for inserting the, the phrase natural-born uh, American was that they feared that a foreign government would indeed uh, plant somebody in this country for a long-range conspiracy to overthrow the new republic. And they feared exactly what they were living with, which was British people all around them. That's what they were, the founding fathers, that's where they came from. Now, speaking of, speaking of Britain, you know, there's the story years ago that when, when Obama uh, became a U.S. senator, uh, at, what, that had been 2000. What was that? Uh, he, you know, he's only in the Senate for a couple of years. But that was that. Was he elected two thousand four or six? I forget. Six. But, six. So, so two thousand seven, he went to Russia with a Senator Luger of Indiana. Yeah, Dick Luger. Yeah. Yeah, and when he got to Russia, the Russian FSB, the Federal Security Bureau, detained the young Senator Obama. They mm-hmm. held him. On suspicion yep. of being a spy, but not an American spy. They were suspicious that he was a spy for Britain. Yeah. <laughs> and think about this. Who was the head of the KGB right then? What well, was it? No, no, not in 2007. No. Let's see, because uh, Putin came in as prime minister in, in the late 90s. Remember, he Yeltsin, uh, they, they removed Yeltsin on, uh, in 1999. Uh, New, you, you New, Year, remember, New Year's Eve. You remember that Putin retained his title as head of KGB even when he took over. It well, that's president? that's yes, that's possibly true, and I don't know, but that's that's possibly true. So what what I'm telling you is, look, this guy has already won. He knows who Obama is. Uh, he knows exactly his history, uh, and I mean they're laughing at America. They are laughing behind their hands at America, at the foolishness that's been allowed in America. Is it common knowledge among intelligence agencies that Barack Obama is not an American, but indeed a foreign agent? Yes. Yes. But do the other agencies know who he works for? Yes. Yeah, they do. And and you think that answer is Saudi Arabia? Well, I know that to be true. And that's why Breitbart, Hastings, and Tom Clancy are dead. Mm-hmm. Okay, Breitbart, no doubt in my mind, taken out. He bragged. I liked Andrew Breitbart, but what he did was incredibly stupid. Really dumb. He yeah. bragged the day before his death that in the morning he was going to reveal shocking information that would stop the Obama campaign. And Just that... To- Mr. Breitbart dropped dead walking home at night yeah. and turned his, – his corpse was blood red. Uh, brighter than that, actually. But uh, the, point, the point is that he caused the death of Hastings and Tom Clancy because he'd been sharing data with them. There's a connection between Breitbart's death and Hastings and Clancy. All of them. Yeah, all of them. Um, because of the information that Breitbart gave to Tom Clancy – uh, he was working on a novel that would have exposed Obama as a Saudi agent, a Saudi uh, plant uh, in the White House. And uh, Michael Hastings reportedly was investigating John Brennan, the new CIA director, who uh, we've been told by former FBI agent John Guandalo. Uh, Mr. Guandalo was told by by uh, U.S. intelligence agents that Mr. Brennan uh, converted to Islam while serving yeah. the, with the CIA in Riyadh. Yes, he did. Notice where it was, Riyadh? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, you're, you're saying that uh, Tom Clancy was taken out because he had been fed information from Andrew Breitbart that he was going to use in a novel? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was well on the way. It was well developed. Do you, do you know what information Andrew Breitbart was going to reveal? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, okay, here, a little shock. Are you ready? Yeah. I've known Tom Clancy since I was 17. 
You've known him personally since 17? 17, yeah. Yeah, I met him. I was the lifeguard at a uh, camp in Quebec. Uh, And uh, Tom and a group of students from school, uh, I can't remember what school he went to, a college, um, they came down one weekend, and they were going to uh, go fishing. Uh, uh, Two of them were left, Tom and this other guy were left in this one boat. Uh, They were right in the cottage next door to our, our, uh, our camp. And uh, they couldn't get the motor going. Well, it was a motor that I used all the time to go fishing because it was right next to my cabin. Actually, my cabin was right next door. And uh, I went over and offered to start it for them and started it. And when they came back, they had some, they caught fish because I told them where to go, actually, for fishing. The other guys went elsewhere and didn't catch much. But the, um, yeah, and he gave me fish. Tom, with these stupid, I don't know if you were, do you, did you know what he looked like? Dumpy, he was a dumpy dude <laughs> with uh, so f- Yeah, saw a few photos of him. Yeah, well, and Coke, well, when he was younger, he wore these really thick, uh, you know, dweeb glasses. Um, anyway, so uh, we went, uh, the next day, we ended up going to Expo 67 in Montreal, um, a couple of the councillors that uh, from our camp, myself, uh, and uh, the four dudes that were with um, uh, Tom Clancy, and then we kept in touch for years. Now, he, of course, he became a, an insurance dude, and then he ended up uh, writing books. But was Mister Clancy on the payroll of the CIA, or was he a, just a valuable asset? No, he was. No, um, he wasn't an asset. He was actually a guy who, who was fed information. He was never an asset. Okay, but he was deliberately, he was fed information for a purpose. Yes. Yep. So that information was was intentionally released to him because somebody in the agency desired that the the public know something. Well, yeah, but it was also part of the, you know, the thing of being with a, a writer that, you know, was movies were being made out of. So you, you get caught up in that sort of a, you know, you want to be part of that, mm-hmm. part of the ego. But do you have any idea what this information was that he was in possession of regarding Obama? Well, he knew exactly who Obama was, and he was going to release it by in character form in a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, the character was going to be this president of the United States who was a plant. It was going to be the real, real information about Obama was going to come out in the form of a novel. Mm-hmm. And you think this would have been, again, that he was a Saudi Arabian plant? Yes, oh, absolutely. I know that. Gosh, sure. I, you know, I could have wrote that novel years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Clancy had, you know, already had the, uh, I mean, it, it would have instantly have been a movie. Um, just, yeah. It's sad, but you know Breitbart and his big mouth, man, he caused all those deaths in the end. Do you think it was arsenic? No, no, another poison altogether. That's why they didn't post the bodies for five days. That's why the guy who took the blood work did the blood work and knew the poison that had been used on Breitbart. That's why he was killed. On the morning that the autopsy was supposed to be released. You got it. You just have to put the pattern of events together connect the dots, and it's quite simple to see what's gone on. And, of course, uh, Clancy's body, the post wasn't done for five days. And that poison, you know, the sugars existing in the body and the blood, eat it up. So you need to wait five days before you take an autopsy in order for the the evidence to to evaporate. Yep. Well. Or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, the term is. Um. Jim, if if um, if Mr. O works for the Saudis, have they gotten their money's worth? Because what I'm reading out of the Israeli papers is that they're really ticked off at him. Well, of course they are. No, they haven't got their their money's worth because his his dogma, Marxist dogma, and Valerie Jarrett have been pre- predominant. So, Not. so the Mac Daddy double crossed the Saudis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. double crosses everybody. Yeah, well, yeah, look, it's part of part of the personality. There is no loyalty. He's the wounded child who never grew up straight. He's been warped since childhood. And when you say straight, that may be in more ways than one. Absolutely, 
Yeah, that, that we ever, everyone knows about his bisexuality and his Pakistani, you know, buddy. Mm-hmm. And the, and the little buddies that are brought into the White House even now. Um, with you know, he's 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 got the Saudis uh, meeting secretly with the Israelis. Mm-hmm. All right, that's not a that's a that's a recipe for serious trouble. If you if you if you tick off the Saudi intelligence agencies and the Israeli intelligence agencies, and you get those two guys talk, those two teams talking to each other, there's going to be trouble somewhere for Mr. Obama. I don't think they're going to, I mean, it's one thing, Jim, for him to act like a Chicago street gangster in the United States and push hapless, stupid, wimpy politicians around. But when you when you start double crossing the Saudi intelligence agencies and and the and Mossad, you know, bad stuff happens to people. Mm-hmm. That's what I see. It's like they're really upset with him right now. We got some dead air here right now, Jim. <laughs> I'm not commenting. All I'm right, not. all right. I'm just you know I I you know I'm just connecting dots myself, future dots. You know, saying, okay, when you when you when you mess with those kind of people, something's going to happen to you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know I don't know how, how they're going to react to it, but I know this. You know, uh, if the Saudis did put him in the White House and he's turned on them. And he actually thinks he's the president or something, you know, and, and then he's messing with the Israelis, you know, and uh, he's double crossed them. And he's he's worked Netanyahu into a position, you know, he's told Netanyahu over and over and over, don't attack Iran yet. Don't attack Iran yet. And then all of a sudden, um, Mr. Obama's cutting a peace deal with Iran. And throwing them billions of dollars. Yes. Yes. And so the Israelis know they got they got. Double crossed by the Mac Daddy. Yep, yeah, they did. So, um, so how how you know? I'm down. I only got a couple of minutes here. Um, is anybody in this country? Are there any patriots left in high level positions in this country who will put their lives out. on the line? Yeah, they're being weeded out, and you can't depend on the people in. Uh, well, hey, do, do you know, look at look at the one guy standing out. Well, he's got Mike Lee backing him up, but Ted Cruz. Mm-hmm. You got the one guy who won't play along. One guy, right? But he stands alone. And notice how they distance themselves. Sure, because everyone is everyone's taking care of feathering their own nest down the road because they know Obama's pattern is with Jarrett. They keep track. And you'll get your reward, and the rewards are so amazing. Look what just happened with McConnell. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Three billion dollars. Right. How much of that's going to go in his pocket? Well, you know, and we saw it happen with the Supreme Court with the the Chief Justice Roberts yep. with with Obamacare. Yep. yep. There's another man who was scared skinny. I mean, that, that guy double-crossed the, the conservatives on the court. They were furious. That's what the reports were. The, the conservatives on the car, court were furious when, when the decision came down because they thought Roberts was going to vote against Obamacare. Well, let's be really simple about this whole thing. The whole thing boils down to the trade-off of the country, the uh, tearing it apart from being a constitutional republic into being a thugocracy. This is worse than the mafia. Yes, and 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 we know that it will have a very ugly, unpleasant ending if it's not corrected. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm not hearing anything, Jim, here that that encourages me that that anybody with authority and clout in this country is going to step forward and risk his or her life and pension. And he revenue. There's, but there's more to it than that. It's the whole, he has filled government. All federal government agencies are totally infiltrated with his commie, Marxist-leaning, and Muslim-leaning uh, uh, sorts. Mm-hmm. That's what he's done. Now, you try and ferret out all of these people in this age of rights. 
it's going to be impossible. All right, I, and, I'm, and I'm really short on time, but I've I got to ask you one more question, and I appreciate you staying here with me this whole interview. But your, your, your chain of schools, uh, you, this is named after Dr. Norman Bethune, a Canadian uh, doctor. Um, uh, yes, that's what I wanted to ask you. He was a member of the Communist Party. So tell hey, me, well, why, why would you name your, your schools after a card-carrying communist? Smart marketing. That simple. Smart, smart marketing? Yeah, that's all. So, I mean, we should start the Karl Marx uh, hamburger chain? If it'll do, if <laughs> was, it'll do anything for you in business, why not? You named it after communists. Was it because you knew you were going to China? Yes. Yeah. And yes, you said, I got to name this. I got to name my company for a communist. Yes. In, in fact, not just a communist, a saint in China. Mm hmm. Uh, was this part of a, a CIA cover? Uh, it was well thought out, wasn't it? I'm asking. <laughs> Just think about this. It was well thought out, wasn't it? Right. Well, there you go. All right. Well, we're going to let that be the final word. Uh, my my guest, Dr. Jim Garrow and uh, uh, Bethune Institute and uh, founder of the uh, Pink Pagoda Girls uh, Humanitarian Organization. Jim, fascinating time today with you. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, Bye sir. You. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is True News. Do you need a relationship that won't fail you? Find one that will exceed all your expectations in today's Moment with Charles Stanley. God wants us to have a relationship with Him. And you see, while we're limited to the degree to which we can love and be transparent, and open ourselves, there are no limitations on the other side of that relationship. That is, there are no limitations on what God is willing to show us, willing to teach us, and willing to cause us to feel. And this same holy, righteous, transcendent, sovereign, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, all gracious, loving, kind, God says, above everything else in your life, more important than your preaching, my pastor friends, more important than your singing, all of our musicians. More important than our sharing our faith. More important than serving God in any fashion. God's greatest desire for your life and my life is that we have an intimate relationship with Him. And the only way to begin such a relationship is by trusting Jesus Christ to forgive your debt of sin. Learn more when you click All Things Are New at InTouch.org. Well, Susan and I had a wonderful weekend. Uh, first, we finally moved into the foreclosed house that we purchased. It seemed like forever. Uh, we signed the contract last April, and there were more obstacles, delays, setbacks, and problems than I have time to talk about. But that's the story of my life. I've learned to be quietly determined to accomplish my goals no matter who or what stands in my way. You see, Christians cannot take possession of anything that God has promised them without spiritual resistance. There is always a battle to possess the land God has promised you. Anyway, we finally moved into the house and got settled in. You know, this is what's interesting. On the night we went to closing, our son and daughter-in-law, Jeremy and Tiana, informed us that they are expecting their first child. And on our first night in our new home, Friday night, our daughter Carissa and our three grandchildren, Kiara, Blake, and Grant, walked into the house unexpected. They flew in from Ecuador for a surprise visit. So it was quite a night for Susan and me. It's like the Lord is saying to Susan and me, enjoy the house. It will be full of grandchildren. My friends, children and grandchildren are a promise, a gift from the Lord. Enjoy them. They are His gift to you. Coffee. Coffee now! 